SpaceX Starship Updates and Crew Dragon Schedule Updates My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. Just as a quick reminder, we have a few new designs on our merch store just like this one, so go check them out, they might be a good present for Christmas. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates we're getting very close to the next big day again. The 22.5 km test flight is not far away anymore. Predictions range from 4 weeks to 3 months. So either way, the first flight of a starship in human history is not far away anymore. Alright Mary, this is something. I know it's just a beauty shot and there's nothing new to see here, but what a sight and what a picture it is. Thank you for taking and posting this shot. This is rocket poetry at its best. If this picture is any indicator of what's to come in Boca Chica, the future will be quite beautiful. Alright, onwards to new facts about what has happened since the last episode. SpaceX is increasing the footprint of the launch site. As if it wasn't big enough yet, they've started to prepare another big chunk of land left of the brand new landing pad. It's not clear yet what they will be building here, as this part of the facility wasn't even in the original assessment for the site but it is safe to say that there will be something big. We can rule out a launch control site as it is too close to the landing zone. We can rule out things like parking lots for the same reason. What could be possible is a launch mount for Super Heavy, as a booster with 37 Raptor engines will need a large flame diverter and not what we're seeing being built for Mark 1 right now. So will SpaceX build that shiny black and white launch tower here? Will this be what we saw in the Starship launch animation back in September? I am pretty sure we all want to see the real deal now and this could be it. As always, I'll keep you informed. In this video by South Padre you can get a good overview of how much bigger the whole landing zone recently got. The new pad is huge compared to the old Starhopper landing pad and this whole area to the left of it is what we just talked about. It's as big as the new landing pad itself. SpaceX has finished a first layer of concrete for the landing pad as well. If they stick to the original building plan, we should see the typical circle and an X on it when it is finished. When I see these sites being built for Starship, I always wonder how many boosters will land here? How many launches will it support? When will we see the first humans board Starships for their journey to Mars? Certainly, a look at the beautiful dunes of Boca Chica is not the worst last thing to see before they leave for a new home. On a less poetic point of view, SpaceX has been hard at work fleshing out the launch mount for Mark 1 again. Again, you can clearly see that this is a whole different story than the Starhopper. SpaceX has put a huge amount of work into the launch facility by now. The fuel farm is triple the size now. The plumbing going from the fuel tanks towards the launch mount is complex and the launch mount itself is a tough build with a lot of thought put into it. What I am still a bit puzzled with is that all the integrated systems seem to be directly under where the three Raptor engines will be. This is not very typical to say the least. Now the three Raptors will not put out nearly as much thrust as a full super heavy booster will, but still it will be around 600 tons of thrust. Where will the plume go? What's the thought behind it? I'd so love to be able to talk to Elon about this. I'd roughly have around a million questions right now. What do you think? Where will the hot exhaust gases be directed or will they be directed at all? Tell me in the comments. And the road to Mars goes through Highway 4. Highway 4 though seems not to be sufficient for what's to come. Work on the road itself has begun and we should soon see SpaceX remodel the whole road. Highway 4 will be brought up to standards. It needs to be wider and probably also tougher to withstand the traffic and constant Starship and Super Heavy transportation. The sign pavement ends here will soon be put a bit further down the road towards the sea. The fuselage got a new venting port or possible connector. To me it seems like a venting exhaust, but it again is just speculation. It is positioned roughly in the lower third of the oxygen tank, which would make for a bad position for a venting exhaust. But it could also be just at the top of the methane tank. Hard to tell without internal schematics. The top bulkhead seems to be almost finished. Less and less work is going on here right now. Much more work is still being done on the inside as you can tell by all the cables going into the two main manholes on the tank section. On the shipyard not much has happened in the past days. 
A sure sign for the transportation of the cone section to the launch site being very close now. SpaceX is getting ready to reunite the two halves that were separated again after this year's Starship presentation. The question is just when that will happen. Here a look into Cameron County's website always gives the latest dates and these change a lot. Recently SpaceX put in a lot of new dates and removed them again just to put them back in. An indicator for SpaceX not being completely sure about the exact progress maybe? Or just weather related? The latest dates are as you can see here. We have a primary date today, so in fact SpaceX could be moving the nose cone right now. Two alternative dates have been put up for tomorrow and November 20th. The next slot then is coming up on November 5th with alternative dates on the 26th and 27th. If, and this is a pretty big if, SpaceX does not change these dates, my prediction is that SpaceX will be moving the nose cone to the launch site today, tomorrow or on Wednesday. Then they will have roughly one week to stack the two halves and connect every pipe and cable. Then on the next set of closure dates we might see pressure and system tests. This would most likely mean that SpaceX will have to mount the engines first though, as they are part of the fuel cycle and need to be in for a good test. If these predictions are right, SpaceX would have needed just under two months to finish up Mark 1 after the presentation. Considering that so much was still missing, this would be an incredible engineering feat. And even better, SpaceX would be able to do that first test flight before the holiday season, as many of the workers won't be available during that time. So go SpaceX, you can do it. Crew Dragon Schedule Update So this next topic is on the show as I got an incredible amount of comments and questions about the Crew Dragon schedule. People asked me when we can see the in-flight abort test and when we can expect the crewed flight to happen. So by popular demand, here's what we know and what we can expect to happen in the near future. After April's anomaly, caused by a faulty valve and resulting in a complete loss of the capsule C-201, SpaceX's schedule for Crew Dragon and a reinstatement of the US capability to launch humans into space got messed up quite a bit. For the last few months SpaceX has been busy finding the error that caused the anomaly, fixing it and implementing the new design into the capsule that originally was planned to fly astronauts to the ISS, C-205. This capsule now is ready for the in-flight abort test after SpaceX's successful static fire test of the redesigned Super Draco thrusters. With this test passed, SpaceX once and for all can put the April anomaly behind it and continue with their schedule. The next step after NASA has evaluated the data from this static fire will be the in-flight abort test. It is not scheduled yet, but Elon Musk's latest estimate from October is late November to early December. SpaceX will strap the capsule C-205 on top of a Falcon booster and launch it to a height of between 14.6 and 27.8 kilometers. Within these 18 seconds of flight, the flight computer on board the rocket will detect a loss of thrust and initiate an in-flight abort. All the needed hardware is already at the Cape, so it's in NASA's hands right now when this test will occur. If this test is successful, NASA will greenlight SpaceX for the highly anticipated demo mission too. SpaceX yet again will use a new capsule, in this case C-206, a brand new capsule built for this mission. There's one other line of tests that needs to be finished before NASA will give the go flight for Demo 2 though. The parachute system. Earlier this year NASA deemed the Mark II parachute system used by SpaceX unsafe for use on the crewed mission. SpaceX and NASA decided to reinvent the system with Mark III. This system right now is in a test phase. SpaceX will need to complete 10 drop tests without any problems to get a go from NASA to use the new system on Demo Mission 2. So right now there really is no possible date or time frame to set for the Demo Mission 2. If everything works out perfectly, SpaceX might be able to launch it somewhere in the first quarter of 2020. If not, NASA will unlike with Boeing most likely demand further tests from SpaceX. This is the world Elon Musk is living in. The answer is simple, Crew Dragon will fly astronauts to the ISS as soon as NASA gives the go and no day earlier. And everything will have to go absolutely perfect before that happens. Let's just hope that NASA is as strict with the competition as they are with SpaceX. Lives are at stake here, anything but 100% shouldn't be enough. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will SpaceX be able to launch Mark 1 before the new year comes? And what do you think is enough safety for a crewed flight? As always, tell me in the comments.
Patreon gives the channel stability. Patreon is the basis for everything I am doing, for equipment, for ideas and for setting up a schedule for what's to come. Every patron is a small piece of that stability, the very foundation the channel is built on. Without the patrons, what about it would simply not exist. So thank you very much for your support. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Tom McMullen and Takale Olsen, you rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Sometimes it's just one word missing. There's <laughs> won't be available due the test flight during the first holiday season of the year. <laughs> there is only one. People ask me, what did they ask me? It's in NASA's hands. Sexful? What?